Hi, no, my name is Mark Szymanski and I'm with Soldiers Angels, a national nonprofit organization which works to ensure that our service members, veterans, and their families are supported, uplifted, and remembered through a variety of programs. And today we're continuing our Tribute to Our Heroes video series with Pat Jopling, an Afghanistan war veteran and a member of the team here at Soldiers Angels. And, and Pat, uh, I wanna thank you uh, for joining us today. Uh, we had overcame some difficult difficult uh, technical situation, but uh, we, we made it, adapt and overcome, and, and we're here. So thank you for your service and thank you for joining us. You bet. So Pat, let's uh, start from the beginning. Where did you grow up and uh, why did you decide to enlist in the Air Force? Uh, well, I grew up here in Texas. So I'm a native Texan, Southeast Texas, um, a little Southwest of Houston. And uh, my dad was in the Air Force. He started, actually, he came into the Army Air Corps um, in 1939. So a couple of years before we got involved in World War II. Um, then he transitioned through the Army Air Forces and into the Air Force in 1947 when we became a separate branch. Um, and he was a, a crew chief on some bomber aircraft. So, um, but, you know, just, just some stories that he told me, it just, you know, and going to air shows when I was growing up, it just, you know, you naturally just fall in love with aircraft. So I get, I think it was probably predestined for me to, to go into the military, go into the Air Force, especially. That's awesome. I remember uh, attending many of those growing up as well yes. with my father. So that, uh, that certainly hits very close to home. The best recruiting tool in the world. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it was, it was I, yeah, I remember there was a lot of World War II planes uh, that we'd go and see. It was, it was very cool. Um, so you, uh, you eventually were stationed in Afghanistan at the end of uh, 2009, right? And what was your role, what was your role there? Uh, I was in logistics, uh, basically monitoring the flow of um, troops and cargo in and out of theater. And whether it came from through our thoroughfares, through Ramstein, uh, Kyrgyzstan, Spain, um, uh, Pakistan, Kuwait, wherever. Um, we, we had to monitor the, uh, the flow just to make sure everything kept moving okay and um, any deficiencies, you know, and you have to overcome aircraft breakdowns. And, you know, so it kept us busy that every day of the week, seven days a week. I bet. Well, very good. Um, and so you've been with Soldiers Angels uh, here for, for a little while. How did you learn about Soldiers Angels and, and how did you start working with the organization? Uh, I actually started back in 2017 through an internship program that I heard about. And um, I had gone through my third back surgery. And uh, once I was able, physically able to uh, basically start volunteering again, I started with our church, but I was looking also um, in addition to that work and with a program with veterans, active duty guard reserve, you know, and found Soldiers Angels and just, you know, it basically fell into my lap. So it was perfect timing. And it was close to home and everything kind of worked out. It was perfect. Perfect. Very good. Very good. Well, I know that uh, you, you probably started in a little bit of a different position, but over the past few months, you've really been the organization's lead in um, the, the new effort for welcoming the refugees who fled Afghanistan and are now being integrated into the San Antonio community. Right. What can you tell us about your work, um, the reception you re received from the families arriving from Afghanistan? What, what all do you do and you know, kind of how has that evolved since the start and uh, kind of what are your reflections there? Um, you know, I, I actually, I started through our church. We have a uh, refugee ministry through our church here in town and started with a lady who heads up that refugee ministry and she works with the refugee center um, all the time and basically facilitating what they don't get in donations then she seeks out other donations such as furniture um, is is the biggest uh, obstacle they have um, so i started working with her actually about five years ago um, and it was just a little bit of work here and there basically you know um, where she needed somebody to help go pick up furniture for them and we worked with refugees from all different types of countries. So, um, but we did work right off the bat. I was working with Afghan refugees. Um, more recently, of course, uh, without getting into specific numbers, um, it's picked up quite a bit. So um, we have refugees per se evacuees that have been resettled 
or are resettling here in San Antonio. Um, and to me, because it's close, near and dear to my heart, because I was in Afghanistan and I understand their, their detriment there. Um, and, you know, like I've told, you know, I, I talked to them and I kind of, yeah, you know, it's kind of like an icebreaker when I tell them I was at Bagram and they yeah. smile and they're like, oh, you were at Bagram, you know, and I ask them where they're from. And I was like, oh, I know where that base is. So it breaks ice, you know, breaks the barrier down a little bit and relaxes them a little bit. So um, it, it's, it's really nice to um, see a program that has developed so rapidly mm -hmm. to try to help them. And they're and they are in true dire straits. It's you know it's like when I was watching a documentary on Vietnam and and the fall of South Vietnam, where there was a gentleman on there said you know you you can't understand the amount of humiliation um, when you lose your country. It's just on a whole different level. And so you know for my part, I try to help ease that transition as much as possible. And Amy Palmer, our CEO, has just been just fabulous at uh, stepping up to the plate and saying, you know, how can we help them? So we're basically kind of like an exterior supplement to what I was already doing with our refugee ministry. Um, and uh, she put out basically a solicitation for different items that they would need. She's been working with the refugee center as well. So, you know, just helping them get resettled mm -hmm. is to me, it, you know, it serves a great purpose. It kind of helps ease, I guess, the, the frustration, anger, uh, all those emotions, you know, of what happened at the airport, you know, their last few days there. So, um, but it's, it, and it's been a tremendous help to them. And I've seen the look in their faces. They're, they're a lot more relaxed when, you know, when they get here, they're in a foreign country. Uh, the children are here, the wives are here, the ones that were able to bring their families um, pretty quickly. Uh, it, it's just a big relief to them knowing that, yes, they're, they're welcomed here. They're well received here. We, we're in a military community, military city here. So it's, it's you know, a lot of the veterans that, that live in and around San Antonio served in Afghanistan. So I've, I've met other veterans that have been helping as well. And it's, it's a little bit of a healing process for us, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoy working with them. Yeah, that's, that's uh, incredible reading about your work and, and um, hearing about all the different stories. You know, we get updates pretty often about um, some, of the, some of the different uh, activities you have going on and you're making a real difference in people's lives. Like first, you know, just, just, just um, a real physical difference in their lives. And uh, I, I heard um, recently delivered, helped deliver a hundred beds to, uh, to some, yes. some families. What's, what was that? You know, it, you, we think about all the things that, you know, someone would need when they come over, right. clothes and, and, and toiletries and all those right. things, but a hundred beds, you know, that's a, yeah. you, you don't necessarily think about that off the top of the head, but uh Right. And, and, and like you said, yeah, it's the basic necessities that, that they're going to need when they first move in. It's kind of like, you know, when, when you send a child off to college, you know, which you will be, you know, doing in you know, another 15 plus years, um, you know, what are they going to need for their apartment? What are they mm -hmm. going to need for their dorm room? So it's, it's basically, you know, things that we don't really think about. And, you know, when I've met, you know, basically almost all of them that I've met, especially for the children, you know, we'll give them toys and they get all excited, you know, because they don't have any toys, you know, and they, they get really excited. But when they see a bed come through the doorway, when they've never, ever had a bed before, yeah. and yeah. we put that in their room and they're looking at their parents like, is this mine? Is this really mine? And, mm -hmm. and they seem to enjoy the bed more than the toys, you know, so it's, you know, it, it's, it's just, you know, the reactions that you get like that, knowing that, that all the, the hard work that you're putting in is worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, that's, yeah, I, I look forward to hearing all of these stories and uh, it's, you know, this, it seems like this has been going on for a while now, but this is only really a few months. This is, this all has been happening, uh, but the number of people you've touched is, is absolutely amazing and uh, congratulations and, and, and thanks for all your work. Um, I don't want to, I know you're a very busy person, so I don't want to take up a ton of your time and I appreciate again for you making the time for us, but before I let you go, I want to ask, what does it mean to you to be a veteran? 
you know, you don't really think about it. Uh, I guess, you know, the, the one reminder I get, you know, like I said, being in military city, you have so many veterans here, which, you know, it's kind of like we, we all blend in, you know, and, and it seems like um, we can recognize each other. We, you know, point each other out. But um, to me, it's like, you know, just driving down the highway and whenever I see an American flag blowing, I, it just, it gives me probably satisfaction that most people will never understand how much pride I have in my country. And knowing when I look at that flag, that I serve to help defend that flag, defend my country in any way possible. And so even as a veteran, you know, my service is continuing, you know, beyond active duty because we're able to help the Afghan refugees. It's, you know, the service is continuing. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I know, you know, guys that'll get excited when a Corvette goes by. Well, that's the same excitement I get when I see a flag waving in the air. That's beautiful. That's yes, a very beautiful sentiment, and uh, I know it's shared by by a lot of veterans and and uh, a lot of civilians as well. So yeah, right. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, you mentioned um, you know continuing your service. So if anyone out there wants to continue their service, um, please join us as a volunteer. Uh, go right. to soldiersangels.org. Uh, follow us. All the things that we're doing on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all the social channels. We're always posting updates, and you can see um, the impact that you know P Pat is having on her community and on all these newcomers to their community. Right. So, yeah, that's uh, yeah. Please, uh, please join us, and if you need some support, uh, join us as well. We have um, uh, Soldiers Angels has a number of programs. Uh, for veterans, uh, for active duty, for their families. So um, don't hesitate to, uh, to ask for help if you need it. And uh, if you can lend a hand, do that too. So Pat, from all of us here at Soldiers Angels, thank you for being part of the family. Um, and thank you for continuing your service. This is, um, it's uh, incredible what you're doing. Thank you. Happy to do it. Great. Well, wonderful. Thanks everyone for watching.